Hi there, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Hopefully this becomes a short video, but um, I want to put out some important information to you, especially if you are proudly professing your beliefs in Jesus Christ or professing to be a believer. We know throughout scriptures that we are described as a tree. For Jesus Christ said himself to us, judge a tree by its fruit. Okay. So what I'm about to go over with you all should really open your eyes when it comes to believers professing Christianity or professing to be of the body of Christ. In reality, <clears throat> If someone purchases a tree and plants it in your in their yard, or well, it's a little small tree, it is stated you can probably expect to see the fruits of the tree, the first fruits of the tree within three to four years after planting the tree. I wanna I want you to hold on to that time frame. Three to four years after planting the tree. If you purchase it, you can expect to see fir your first fruit within three to four years. Okay. And then it says, if growing from a seed, and we know in scriptures, the Lord speaks about the parable of the sower, which is the seed. If growing from seed, it can take anywhere from five to 13 years before the tree is mature enough to bring forth fruit. The reason I say this is because we have believers that are within our churches which boast in their hearts that they've been believers for X amount of years. Many would say, oh, I was a believer since birth. Others would say, I was raised in a church, born in a church. They would boast how their father was a pastor and their mother was even evangelical. And they would go around to different countries to do ministry for the Lord. This is a boasting. But then the Lord makes us to think. He says, test every spirit. Then he says, judge a tree by its fruit. Though a person professes all of these things, boasting in their hearts that they were Christians for 20, 25 years, 10, 15 years, 30 years, statistically, or I would say scientifically, one ought to bear fruit between five to 13 years. So if one professes to be a believer for however long, the fruits should have been ripe already. One say, oh yes, I was a Christian for 15 years or, or 20 years. But there's no fruit. There's some you wouldn't even know what they were unless in deception, being deceived their own selves, profess to you that they are one that is a professing believer. But as scripture stated, they do lie. The lie is one is deceived to believe to believe that they are of the body of Christ without the fruits of the Holy Spirit ripening in their lives. As scripture stated again, if the spirit of God does not abide within one, within an individual, they do not belong. So if the spirit does not abide and, and the only way for the spirit to abide in us to be sent from heaven, from God to live in us, that he 
the spirit bear fruit within us and we produce those fruits outwardly to where people would see in the spirit. God says, if they don't have that, they don't belong to me. And without the Holy Spirit, no one can bear the fruit in which God calls us to bear. I want you to listen to this verse in which it is quite scary and should be eye awakener for many who are within the body, who are within the church itself. This is in Luke. Jesus spoke a parable. He said, A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. And he came and sought fruit thereon and found none. Then he said to the dresser of the vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why cumbereth it the ground? And he answering said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig about it and dung it. And if it bear fruit, well, and if not, then after that thou shalt cut it down. What the Lord is seeking and what this parable is in what Jesus spoke about should be terrifying to many within the body. For many, as I say, boast in their belief. Being trees in the spirit. But yet, bearing no fruit. God constantly looks down from heaven at the children of men. Seeking fruit. Three years has gone by. No fruit. He comes back the fourth year. None. Five. Six. And it continues. Yet one boasts to another. I've been a Christian for 15 years. I've been a Christian for 30 years. I've been a Christian for 40 years. But yet, the grace of God, you're still alive. But at the same time, you're dead because you bear no fruit. As it says in the parable, the owner of the vineyard, which is God, says to the vineyard dresser, which is Jesus, this tree bears no fruit, cut it down. What is this cut down? Kill it. Brothers and sisters, God is gracious, long suffering and patient to us all. He calls us all that professes to be believers to bear fruit. But how can one bear fruit without the first steps of repentance? For we've heard the gospel in which the gospel has called us to repent and to be baptized. That's the first step after hearing the gospel. To repent and to be baptized. To confess sins unto the Lord and to be baptized. To receive his spirit which comes from heaven. And it is his spirit that will produce fruits within us. But men and women of the church refuse baptism. Refuse repentance. At the same time, refusing God. Therefore, years have gone by. A 
Lord is patient in grace. See that that same tree which boasts to others is cut down. If God had his vineyard and you were a tree, and if the Lord was hungry, can he depend on you to fulfill his appetite? All right, brother. So you have this chart in front of you. I'm not sure if it's going to be backwards or not, but I just wanted to I just wanted to give you an understanding of the fruits of the Holy Spirit in which a believer whom the Lord accepts would have the Holy Spirit and with having the Holy Spirit after confession of sin and being baptized um, turning away from the things of this world, one ought to produce these fruits. And as it is written in scriptures in the book of Galatians, that one who produces these things and have these things um, in which these fruits would be ripe, in such there is no law. In such there is no law. And this is what the church must have. So when we look at the church in this world where uh, Christianity, Christians boast that we are the largest percentage, percentage of um, a religion population, that is false. I mean, one may claim that we are the largest, but if the true believers were the largest, were these the fruits that every individual that professes himself to be a believer ought to produce? Especially here in America. If Christianity is the largest population in America, and that same Christianity, which is the largest population in America, bore these fruits, crime wouldn't be at its height. Abortion murder, uh, divorce, uh, rape, etc. I want you to really think about that. So if Christianity is the largest population in America, and then there's high crime rate and high lawlessness, who are the majority that's committing these crimes? Let that sink. Judge a tree by its fruit. Test every spirit. Do not believe everyone that says that they, that they are of the church. Even God does not believe that. Those who have the Lord's spirit, it is God who says that they are his. If one does not have his spirit, the Lord said himself that they do not belong to him. But this, these are a counterfeit of the belief. So if the Lord were in a garden and he were hungry, could he depend on you as a believer to give him what he needs to satisfy himself? Or does he have to turn away and come back another year? And what if he comes back the next year? Will he have to turn away again and again and again? But what we must understand, there comes a time when the Lord will not come back. And if he comes back, he comes back with an ax. And that is to cut you down and to throw you in the fire because one refuses to bear fruit. It's not the simple fact that they cannot. It's the simple fact that one refuses. When one refuses to look at themselves, having known the knowledge of good and evil, but yet continues to live in wicked ways against the will of God, 
After a while, the Lord himself will cut you down. The Lord seeks all of these fruits within one tree, and that is an individual. Peace, God's peace, not the world. Love, God's love, not the world's love. God's definition of love includes his truth. And we know that his truth, the world hates. But God desires that we have his love, not the world's love. Faithfulness. Are we faithful unto him, having turned away from the things of this world, having made ourselves a living sacrifice, having denied ourself, taken up our cross, and following after his son, the Messiah, Jesus Christ? Are we faithful brides adorned in holiness and righteousness? Or are we of the harlot church? Patience, not only with God, but with mankind in this world. Gentleness, that's a given. Joy, this joy does not depend on weight, on the things of this world, but this joy depends on God. This world could be going into chaos, but there's joy within our hearts because God, through his Holy Spirit, comforts us. Goodness, this goodness is based on good works. We have the knowledge of good and evil according to God. In our understanding in which we have is we depart from wickedness and choose good. We depart from evil and choose good. Kindness. Not nice, but kindness. Nice tells you what you want to hear. And that's flattery. But kindness tells you what you ought to hear. Self-control is a big thing within the church itself. This says caring, but I know there's another word for it. I believe in this one, they changed the word. But these are the fruits in which the Lord commands, doesn't ask you to. He commands that all believers produce these fruits unto ripeness. Every believer, you must test them. These are the fruits that they ought to bear in ripeness. The Lord says, if these fruits are not born within the tree, they will be cut down. Granted, he knows it does take time for these types of fruits to ripen. This is why he's patient, long-suffering. Gracious, know that these fruits in which the Lord has called us to bear, he calls us to bear these things because this is him. He is peace. God is love. He is faithful and patient. He is caring. He is gentle. He's full of joy, especially towards the righteous ones. He rejoices, it says in scriptures. He is good. Therefore, he calls us to reject evil and accept good because this is who he is, kind, and he's, and he's long-suffering, not easily angered. So what you see here, the Lord wants his children to have this within themselves. But what we see is and understand this, when mankind rejects God's image, they basically reject him, saying that they do not want to be like God. God calls us to be this way, and we will become this way through his Holy Spirit. 
This is basically his DNA. So with these, this is why the Lord says, those who do not have my spirit, they are not mine's. For his spirit is of him and he places his DNA within us and it seals us for the day of redemption. So at the coming of the Lord, whether we are alive or dead, when Jesus sends forth his angels to gather his elect, his elect know who belongs to the Lord because of the spirit that abideth within us and the fruits in which we bear through the Holy Spirit. If the Lord were hungry and you were a tree in a garden, would he be able to truly depend on you to satisfy his hunger? Or will you say to him, I do not have faithfulness. I do not have the love in which you define as love. I do not have peaches. Or watermelons. This is the fruits we ought to bear. And as the Lord gives us grace every day. To to continue our lives here in this world. We ought to strive for these things. The Lord will help us. To bring these to fullness that you may share into his that you may share in his kingdom imagine that imagine in the new earth the new jerusalem that descends from heaven which is written in the book of revelation every individual would have produced these fruits. Imagine a earth where every individual produced these fruits. I would love to live there. I would love to live there. There's no crime. There's no hate. There's self-control. You can live in your house with your doors wide open. You can trust anybody. Your children can play out in the streets. Your children can walk anywhere and be okay, be safe. But here in this world, and the majority of the population professes to be a Christian, be to be Christians, if majority of the population would be Christians, it would be a different story. The Lord would truly be here in America if a majority truly produce these fruits. Wanted to go over this with you all, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Strive, pray, receive the Spirit of God. Produce the fruits necessary in which God, in which God commands us to have. If not, the tree will be cut down. Y'all take care.